Congratulations, your offer has just been accepted. Now what? Hey, I'm gonna lay this out for you chronologically, the events that take place in my mind and with my team to bring you as much value as possible. My name is Brett Riggin, co-founder of Physician Well Systems. By now, we're on, uh, we're we on step four now. You probably know who I am. I've dedicated the last 15 years of my life uh, buying and selling real estate. I've bought and sold over $20 million worth of real estate. I've built my own seven-figure passive income portfolio as well too. Now I'm here to provide that experience, provide that value back to you so you can get there as well too. Let's jump right into this. Adding assets to your portfolio. Again, congratulations. And even if you're planning this, you're thinking it through and that's the first step. Thoughts turn into actions, turn into reality. So let's take a look. Now remember, um, this is step four of the six, six steps to leveraged passive cash flow. And you've probably heard me talk about it before. The book, How to Get Rich as a Doctor, is now available on Amazon, and I dive into all the detail of this and even more in the book. It's a great, easy read, so jump into that book as well to read through this. So let's jump into number four here, step four of acquisitions. We are acquiring our asset and we're adding it to our portfolio. So in my mind, these are the chronological events that are gonna take place to you and I, for you. And I wanna make sure that I lay these out. This is the transaction process, the transaction coordinator process in my mind. So we've got that offer accepted. We're gonna go through some inspections. We got the inspection period. And we um, th then need to provide our documents to the title company for the LLC. We're gonna talk a little bit about benefits of an LLC. We have to confirm our numbers while we're still in the due diligence process, timeline or period. Everything in writing, super important. I'm gonna stress that a lot here. Review the HUD or the settlement statement, making sure all of our numbers are right. Make sure we've got insurance and utilities taken care of before we close on the property. We need to engage with our property manager prior to closing on the property. We're gonna fund this deal, whether it's cash or finance, we're gonna take care of that. The pre-close property inspection is just as important as the initial inspections as well. Virtual closings and mobile notaries, talk a little bit about that. And then boom, we got the keys. Uh, that's it, that's all there is to it. I'm gonna explain to you some of the things that have worked well for me, that have not worked well for me, and some of the, um, the uh, challenges that I've had through the years as well too. All right. Offers accepted, first step into this process is the inspection period, the due diligence period. And in certain states, you're gonna have the EMD, earnest money deposit that goes down, or the due diligence in some states like uh, here in North Carolina, uh, pay to play like I call. Uh, but you, when you write an offer, uh, we wanna make sure that we write it the way that works for us. I like writing offers that go hard after inspection because I want to develop this process for you that doesn't require you to be boots on site, doesn't require your time to do this. And I don't want the, the um, liability, the, the stress of the, the risk until I know I'm, I've cleared inspection. So we can do this remotely and this is how we're gonna do it. Uh, due diligence period, talk about that. Schedule as soon as possible. As soon as that offer is accepted, let's get the team rolling because I want ample amount of time to review our findings after the inspections are complete. I don't like when I re get information at 4 p.m. and I've got to make a decision by 5 p.m. in writing. The real estate agent and contractor. Who is going to do the inspections? Well, it'd be great if the real estate agent and the contractor both did it because the real estate agent can get a feel for after repair value. Um, current market rent, that kind of thing. And the contractor can get a, uh, a feel of the actual work that needs to be completed. And then they can generate the, the estimate for us and that way we can confirm our numbers. That works great. Another thing that you could do is a full home inspection or any other additional inspection. So it typically, I believe between the four and you know three to $600, uh, I will caution you on this. Home inspectors, it is their job to tear apart the house. So they're gonna find every little thing and mark it red on the paper and then pass it over to you. They've also killed a lot of deals, but think of it as good because they're there finding every problem or situation. Ultimately, if you ran a full home inspection, you had your contractor in there and you had your real estate agent walk through, you are mitigating as much risk as you can. 
The other thing to think about is any type of additional inspection that needs to go um, forward here. A lot of times you see foundation inspection, termite inspection, um, you know, I just can't think of anything uh, landscaping or, you know, it's, if the water's not running off, any type of inspection that you need to have done, you need to have it done in this due diligence period. The real estate photography companies, we can also leverage them to take pictures for us as well. Sometimes, uh, you know, the real estate agent may not provide the best pictures for us. Um, I can share with you and the resources, a couple of the companies that we use, HomeJab is one, they're nationwide. Uh, Nextdoor Photo is a great, they're in a few markets here in the east side of the, the states. Um, and they can take the pictures for us that look good, they present. So as a wholesaler, I like using um, these companies because they provide basically sale worthy pictures but we give them the process tell them which paper which pictures to take and they also do a walkthrough report for us as well too so when you get established you could actually even have the photography companies complete the abbreviated inspections take all of the pictures and provide this information to you zoning is another thing to um, confirm in in this uh, due diligence period as well too i purchased one time what i believed was going to be a duplex and i found out um, in my permitting process that the city was not going to allow it to be a duplex and this was a up down duplex that had been a duplex built as a duplex i was mind blown at the way this wouldn't work out but ultimately you have to confirm this that particular property had not been uh, certified as a rental in a time period allowed by the uh, by the city to allow this to be a duplex. I ended up having to make that duplex a single family house, one unit. Fascinating. We had enough room in the margin to take care of that, but you wanna make sure that you're confirming the zoning for the way that you want to uh, hold the property or exit the property. Addendum to extend the time period. If you cannot complete all of this, or if the seller is not working with you, the wholesaler is not working with you, or your contractor can't get there in time, the addendum to extend the time period is always an option. Remember, everything in writing, put that in writing, ask, it never hurts to ask. Typically, sellers, uh, wholesalers, people are gonna work with you. You assume the information provided by the wholesaler was correct, make adjustments for your actual findings, and request a price adjustment. So during this period, um, when we, when we put our offer together, we, we assumed the information provided by the wholesaler or the seller was correct. Now here are our findings. This is the actual real world. And that's why we recorded all of the questions we needed, the, the uh, information required to analyze the deal. That's why we recorded all that stuff. Because now when I come back and say, hey man, you said the windows were new and they, they're broken. They don't even work, right? So I have something that, that that I can go back to them with and say, we were clearly off the mark here. I need to adjust the price by X, Y, Z, right? So record everything. This is why everything works. You can extend if you need, make sure everything is in writing. Second step, uh, I don't know if it's a second step, but after that step is LLCs. I am not a tax, a, um, a certified tax accountant, a certified public accountant, sorry about that. I am not a, an attorney. Um, I'm not even an accountant, uh, but these are the things that have worked for me. So all this information you want to take to your CPA, you want to take to your attorney to check this stuff out. This is the stuff that's worked for me. I love LLCs. They separate me from the asset, the liabilities of the asset that is. So if you think about it, the asset itself is the rental property, but the liability of it, uh, the risk of it. The LLC puts that corporate veil between me and the asset itself or the problems of the asset. I love that it keeps my personal side of things away from away from the business side of things they also allow us or afford us the opportunity to maintain anonymity and not only is that a funny word but it actually brings a lot of value to us as well too anonymity keeps me or keeps my name away from everything the, as a wholesaler or an investor myself, I have spent many years finding people's information so I can reach out to them, see if they'd be interested in selling. This is what I want 
to you to avoid. And I also want to make it um, more difficult for um, other people to find out who, whoever it may be, why ever they want to get a hold of you. I don't want them to be able to get a hold of you because you put your personal information on an investment property. So using an LLC, we actually build uh, anonymity by putting a registered agent in a virtual office together, which I show you how to do uh, in, in the resources, I believe. But that allows us to keep our name off of that. So I don't want anybody calling you, texting you, direct mailing you, um, putting bandit sides in your yard. I want you to maintain your separation from the investment. And that's far as risk and as far as anybody knowing that you own it. I don't want them bothering you. Tax benefits, like I said, um, your CPA and your tax strategist will align you with the benefits of the LLC. It's a pass-through entity. Uh, we use it, we absolutely love it. There it is, that's the resource for uh, the registered agent in the virtual office. These, that way we use their information, their contact information, they receive mail, um, anybody skip tracing, trying to pull data on somebody, it's pulling up them. We've used Northwest uh, Northwest registered agent quite a few times we we love it you can um, find them at that address there are three documents for the LLC that you have to provide to the title company or the attorneys this is the operating agreement articles articles of incorporation and the EIN assignment letter uh, these uh, we talked about building your team the only one have to provide them once to my title company and then they take care of it but those are the three major documents that we use for the LLC the next step is confirming numbers so we've gone through our inspection period no we have not gone through our inspection period I want you to confirm these numbers during our inspection period that's our time to back out withdraw without losing uh, our EMD or um, uh, being at risk for non-performance. So this is done during the inspection period. The repair costs and timeline. I want my contractor to walk. I want my contractor to tell me what the repairs are, what the scope of work is, and then what the estimate is. Along with that estimate, I want to make sure that he's telling me a t or she's telling me a timeline that they can get this done in as well too. How soon can we start? How long is it going to take? How much is it going to cost? ARV, after repair value, I want to make sure I'm confirming that with my real estate agent. I'm not using Zillow or PropStream or Batch or anything. Now, I'm, this is real money. This is real deal. I'm going to confirm those numbers with my uh, real estate agent, and I want to look at that comparative market analysis, the CMA that you've heard me talk about before. I want three to five comparable properties within the last, right now, with where we're at in the market, I'm in the last two months I need to see these actual properties within our CMA specs the rent in the neighborhood at this point in time uh, I've, I've already checked it on the rental manager from Zillow I need to check with my property manager and I need to get a firm confirmation that this is going to perform within this range of rent and that they are okay with the neighborhood the street the insurance, I need to confirm the insurance costs. This is really simple. You can send the property address to your insurance provider and they can give you a quote easy in a, in a day. So you've got the time to put this out and make sure you're confirming that in your deal analyzer or in your in your deal analysis process. If, if we're looking at a monthly arbitrage here, the difference between a cost of 1100 insurance to 2200 insurance could crush could crush your numbers. I also want to confirm taxes. Uh, make sure that the taxes that you have in your deal analyzer is exactly what or as close to what you're going to be paying. Interest rate, I want to make sure uh, that that interest rate aligns with the number that uh, I'm projecting to refinance with or finance with. Now the refinance piece, you have to keep in mind that if you are three months out from refinance in a volatile market like we are currently, I have to anticipate that. Uh, am I going to add a 0.5%? Just be conservative in everything you do. Everything in writing. Absolutely. Watch this. This will be fun. Purchase sale agreement. Everything in writing. So if there's any type of addendum or change, yeah, you can leave that in there. No, I'm taking that with me. Uh, you can keep 500 bucks. You can keep the MD. Whatever it is, whether it's 
uh, verbal. It's always best to be in writing uh, for certain things, depending on your risk tolerance. Emails are fine. Text messages work for certain things, but it's always best to have things in writing. The addendums, especially the extensions, if you need an extended time, make sure you get that in writing and get it signed. Anything with the purchase sale agreement, get it signed, both sides, not just one side. Get them signed. You, you have to change the timeline, get it signed, get it in writing. You terminating a deal, get it signed, get it in writing. Your insurance numbers, your tax numbers, repairs and repair costs, the scope of work as of when I mean a repairs, the repair costs, the timeline, the rent, the neighborhoods, you guessed it, everything in writing. That's what's gonna mitigate risk for you. It's, you, you kind of get through the process and you get going through, it takes so many um, deals you're looking at to, to get one. Don't fall in the process of not getting things in writing. Again, set up your checklist, check the boxes, it's simple. Review HUD and settlement statement. So we are now moving towards close. Typically you're going to, in my mind, I'm putting this together, uh, you are typically going to get this, hopefully if your title company is working with you, you're going to get this probably a day or two ahead. Um, sometimes it, the title companies get uh, behind and you know sometimes you're seeing this maybe at the closing table or the, you see it the first time with the, um, the mobile notary or the first time it, you know, it gets emailed to you and you're supposed to sign. That stuff happens, the more you can have clear communication out front and expectations and make sure that you request, hey, I would love to see this HUD at least one day before I have to sign it. That gives you some room. So um, a HUD or a sediment statement, first of all, what is it? It is the document at closing that shows the debits and credits, uh, left side, right side, borrower, seller, that kind of thing and who is responsible for what. So it's it's literally the spreadsheet that, that is signed by both parties saying what the funds are being uh, used for or dispersed to, that kind of thing. I wanna make sure that you have no personal information on the HUD. So we have LLCs for a reason and we have the anonymity structured for a reason. Don't put your personal information on the HUD. It doesn't get recorded, but it goes out there. Definitely make make sure your personal information doesn't go on a mortgage, uh, the, the deed that gets recorded. Obviously you have some personal information that you communicate with the bank, but be very clear on public uh, information. Make sure that you do not have personal information. Confirm all the debits and credits align with the purchase sale agreement and assignment. And that, that purchase sale agreement and assignment is going to depict which goes what, who's paying for what, and who's responsible for who, all of that stuff. This includes the earnest money deposit, the due diligence, what we call the DD, who's paying the closing costs, seller's closing costs, buyer's closing costs, who's paying back taxes, transfer taxes, title insurance, mail away versus mobile notary. There's, there's, there's all these things that you wanna check when you go through them. This is a great checklist just to go through. And every time you see a number, just say to yourself, who's responsible for this? Who's paying for this? And then if you don't know, or if you need more information, refer back to the purchase sale agreement or the assignment or the addendums. And if you can't find that information, then your real estate agent or the title company as well. Mail away versus mobile notary, just a little note on that. Mail away is an overnight that the title company will send to you. So um, overnight to you, typically they give you a return overnight package as well too. Mobile notary is when we schedule a mobile notary to come directly to you. More than likely, you have a notary right there in your office, so you wouldn't even have to use a mobile notary. Construction escrow account. This is also something we're gonna check on the HUD. We'll see that as well. Uh, and we just to make sure that aligns with the repairs uh, estimate that we have set by our contractor. The closing date, make sure that that aligns and um, write that down. So the bottom number on the HUD, you wanna have that, and the closing date as well. Those are two things that are very, very important that you have to refer back to. Confirm any special instructions, any holdbacks or inspection invoices. Make sure that all of that stuff is clear on the HUD the first time through. It's always easier to correct the HUD when you're reviewing it as opposed to a uh, day of the table, day of closing. Now that we've got the HUD, we are about to close on this property. I wanna initiate the process for the insurance and utilities. 
So um, insurance provider to provide the evidence of policy prior to closing, uh, I want it to be active on the day of close. So that way I'm reaching out to them. Remember, I got their quote. I know my number that I put in my analysis. It's very easy for them to activate the policy on day of close. You always want to have active in, uh, property insurance on your property. Again, this is one of the benefits of having real estate. It won't disappear. If you get money in the stock market, it could just disappear. With real estate, it's a tangible asset and it can be insured. So let's take advantage of that. The lender, if applicable, will need to be listed as an additional insured or additional payee on the policy. Um, and your insurance provider will work you through that. I work with a lot of private money lenders, so we're the ones that's, we are the ones who are facilitating that process, making sure that the, they're listed on the policy. Utilities need to be transferred on day of close. <laughs> some municipalities need to be fired. There are some municipalities that are just, uh, they are fascinating to work with. Uh, I could only, um, actually I can't even imagine what it's like to keep all of that straight. I just know that it's a challenge from the investor perspective in certain uh, markets and uh, just be prepared. But on day of close, you wanna set that up. Sometimes they'll have to come out and do an, uh, a physical reading and that's when you get the final bill sometimes title companies hold a, a small amount in escrow for water uh, you know they want to make sure that this is taken care of so each area each market each title company is going to be a little bit different but just make sure that you have it in your checklist to do the insurance and the utilities the property manager is a great time to contact your property manager now We've gone through the process, we've confirmed our numbers, we looked at the HUD, we've got the insurance, the utilities. Um, I have property managers who actually take care of the utilities from day one. So uh, inform your property manager of the new acquisition at this point before close. That way they can be the ones who are helping you through this process and can do the legwork from here out. Pass along the HUD. The, the executed, typically you have to have the SIG signed HUD. They can use that to get the utilities into their name. Um, that and then the uh, property management agreement as well too. Those two documents, they can take it. And remember when I talked about uh, market resources, building your team, I want my property manager to take control of the property from day one. I want them to be responsible for the utilities. I want them to, to cut the grass. I want them to uh, manage the locks, the keys. Man, just take care of everything for us. So we want to let them know it's coming up. Don't blindside them. Request they manage utility transfer process. Request they manage the property during renovations. You know, I feel like I just said this. Arrange for them to pick up the keys at close. When you build your team that's, that's accustomed to working with each other, the property manager has worked with the title company before, has worked with the real estate agent before, this all goes very smooth. Funding. So, are you cash or are you finance? Finance is leverage. You'll need at least 30 to 45 days and you're at the mercy of the appraiser. So, in my experience, I always make sure that the appraiser has been contacted and I'm calling until that appraiser calls me to get into the property. And then even after they're in the property, I call and make sure that, that the report has been given back to the lender as well too. Hold everybody's hand and make sure that it gets handled. Because if not, you'll be fall victim to just being another person in the process. Um, leveraging, the, the more you get into it, the, the more deals that you do, especially with the same lender, again, the smoother that that process is gonna go and you can start compressing that required time to get it done. Confirm wire instructions over the phone every time. Every time. So whether you're cash, uh, or, uh, if, if you're leveraging, then the, the bank actually does this process. But if you're cash, confirm the wire instructions. I'll get in an email, I'll call them, I'll have them read it back to me, and uh, I can have it confirmed in that direction. I also like to wire the funds one day prior to close for a smooth transaction. I've been at so many closing tables when I'm sitting there and waiting for the money, waiting for the money, waiting for the money, and I don't. Um, want you to be stressed or if you're working with a private lender I don't want them to be stressed plenty of time clear expectations clear communication one day ahead of time it, it's even worth the cost of worth the cost of money opportunity cost as well too ask for confirmation the wire was received 
and you'll notice uh, sometimes you'll have to get the uh, confirmation that it was sent to from your bank if, if it's not received uh, following that process but just helpful check check the boxes make sure it's received make sure everything's there you're good to go now on to the pre-close property inspection. Remember, I said that this was just as important as the original inspection. So uh, depending on what your agreement looks like, a lot of times we'll purchase properties in broom swept condition, meaning that there are no personal belongings inside the property and there's no personal property or debris on in or around the property as well either. This inspection makes sure that that is true and that the property is in the same condition as it was 30 days ago or whatever when we walked. Uh, sometimes uh, tenants or uh, owners maybe have a tough time getting something moved out or frustration comes in or maybe there's just some damage that happens to the property. Window is broken, somebody breaks in, you just never know. So you always want to walk the property within 24 hours of the close. The way you know what you're getting and that it's the same as what it is when you looked at it. And I've had multiple times where I've had to uh, price adjust because uh, uh, they've left a lot to couches or TVs or you know whatever it may be. I've had to have price adjustments to take care of it because that wasn't part of the agreement. So this must happen every transaction. Do not let your team fall away from this period. You wind up buying a property and spending another three or four thousand dollars to uh, get it cleaned out or worse yet find out that the tenant never left. That is the worst, worst um, situation. So make sure that you visit and everything's cleaned out of the house, out of the garage, out of the driveway, out of the road, everything. Make all requested adjustments or changes in writing. So if it's not aligning with what you were anticipating, make sure you put it in writing. Virtual closings versus mobile notary. Cash purchases will not require any notarized signatures on your behalf. Um, we're just gonna be signing documents. And um, the only time that you'll be using a notary then is when you're leveraging capital. So if you are financing it out of the gate or when you do a refinance, that's when you'll be using a notary. Mobile notaries are all around you. Like I said, typically there's probably one in your office. You never have to go to the title company anymore. That was one of the big changes uh, that we saw in the industry through COVID was we don't, I don't have to go to the title company anymore. Uh, as a early wholesaler many, many years ago, I, it was always kind of awkward for me too. I've got the, the seller and then the end buyer in the same room and it, it was just, it was a challenge. Um, but now, um, you know, I can have notaries come to me, I have them come right to my office and it makes it real simple. And from there, we even had notaries in our office like I'm sure you do as well too. Made it really simple. Keys, keys, keys. This is all part of the transaction coordination. And here, keys is a congratulation. You've made it through. You've officially added an asset to your portfolio. Again, congratulations. Celebrate it. This is a time to step back and enjoy it. Enjoy the process. Learn from um, the smooth things. Learn from the things that weren't so smooth. Adding assets to your portfolio. Remember, this is a checklist. Inspections. LLC, well, how are you gonna title the property? Confirm your numbers before the inspection period is done. Everything in writing all the way through the process. Review your HUD or your settlement statement, depending on where you're at. Insurance and utilities. Make sure you've got those engaged before you close. Property manager. Make sure you're letting them know you've got an acquisition coming up and asking them to take care of the property. Funding, whether you're cash or finance. The pre-closed property inspection member, super, super important. Make sure there's no tenant, no trash, same condition that you thought it was gonna be in. The virtual closing, never have to go to the title company again or a mobile notary if you're financing and got them keys. Congratulations, so exciting, so exciting. All right, so thank you again for your time. I really appreciate it. And again, check out the book, How to Get Rich as a Doctor. You can follow us on the Real Estate Mogul MD as a great podcast where we're talking with other like-minded investors, like-minded physicians doing just this, the six steps to the leveraged passive cash flow. 
and we just finished up the step four acquisitions. Uh, stay tuned, check out the next steps where we're renovating these properties, and also I wanna show you the great ways to be efficient and effective in managing your assets as well too. Let's make your money work for you. Thank you for your time. I, I look forward to meeting with you. Let's make it happen.